My name is Buck Willingham. Uh, I joined this fire company, Citizens Fire Company, in May 1950. I turned 18 today, May the 20th, and it was the biggest thing I've done in my lifetime since joining the United States Navy in 1952. Uh, there's a lot of things that's happened since then, a lot of major things. Uh, I guess the most spectacular fire, I guess, that I can remember was the Locust Hill fire, which there were two, I think, two or three victims in that fire. Uh, it happened early in the morning, and um, a friend of mine who lived not too far from me. And I don't normally say that, but I saw the news clippings. It was like something like six. Was it early in the morning? Yeah, but the thing is, it's not two or three. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> Richard McGacky, who lived to, close to, to where I lived back then, which was only about a mile from there, were the, but the first one was there. And there was an old gentleman in the yard, and we asked him if there were anyone in the home, and he said uh, he, was, he was in shock and he really couldn't talk. In the meantime, we heard uh, voices and screaming and... Um, of course, at that time, the fire department was on the way there. It was uh, off the road about a mile, and it was a very hazardous road. Couldn't make any headway getting in there. Uh, there were two folks up in the second floor, and at that time, I worked for CRTV Cable, and we had a bucket truck. And we took those folks off the roof of that building down to safety, uh, but the rest of them we couldn't get out. That was that was quite a fire. I guess the next one that I can remember was uh, Miller Chemical, and that was a bad situation to begin with because of the chemicals involved in it. But it was a firefighter from Independent who lost his life in that fire guy by the name of uh, Huffnagel. That was a complete loss to that building. Uh, when I joined back in 1950, uh, my brother was chief at that time, and I guess that's the main reason I joined. And also, I had two, two sons involved in the Citizens Fire Department, so that made the uh, pretty much a family affair um, and, and uh, Mr. Weller I believe Frank Weller was the training officer back then and uh, you know that was that was some real training then probably more so than they have now when I uh, first came here like I say in 1950 there was the building that we had the uh, engine house we call it, it was on the corner of West and, and Washington Street and it was an old metal, old wooden building, and uh, had one big main door in it that we put three fire trucks in and out of it. In the back of that, I can remember a big old pot belly stove. Uh, that, uh, that's how we heated the place. We had two floors there. The, the first floor house, three trucks, 1923 Commerce, a 1930 Chevrolet, and a 1952 International. Uh, and our meeting room at that time was on the second floor. And of course, when the fire alarm went off, everybody tried to get down um, a pair of steps that's about four foot wide, so you can imagine how that scrambling went. Uh, and then in 1958, I don't know, we scraped up enough money to uh, build a new building there. Uh, we tore that building, the old building down, and put up a nice brick one-story building. Which still stands, and, uh, and we lived there for I guess 1998 or nine, I believe. Can't remember exact date, but then they moved here to this building, and it's the most elaborate building here. And you can, as as, as we can see. It houses uh, one, two, three, four trucks 
plus the 1930 Chevrolet that they still have. I was fire chief uh, here at this company in, 1990, in 1988 to 1992. And when I retired in 92, I asked the company if I could refurbish the old 1929 Chevrolet fire truck, which the permission was given. And uh, we overhauled the engine. I took the engine out and sent it away and had it redone, put back in. And today, it's, it's painted red and white, uh, and it, it's still in operating shape. Uh, and it sits on this floor today. But the, uh, the worst, I guess, is uh, when you have a fire situation with children involved <clears throat> that you know you can't save. Uh, and I don't know the year, but uh, in Ranson, Many years ago, there was a house that had lots of children in it. That there was nothing to, we couldn't save anybody. Couldn't save anybody, and that was the, probably the worst that I've ever run across. This is where uh, uh, the fire company really, you know, holds together and... Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And then you... You critique it all afterwards and uh, find out the mistakes that you've probably made or the, what you could do better. And, uh, you know, it, it brings everybody together. When you talk about those things, it makes you think. Somebody once told me that life is a matter of inches and, and seconds sometimes. Boy, no doubt about that. You know, we've had many, many trailer fires. Uh, with a loss of life, and the worst part of a trailer fire is retrieving the victims. Nothing any worse than that. This is because these trailers are really, are they like tinder boxes? Do they go up fast? Or? Uh, back, back when they were built back then, they were, yes. They were very thin, very little bit of insulation, uh, and they're so close to heat. The heat is what really takes the death toll. What about today's buildings, Buck? You know, the new homes, is it all that vinyl? That can create a really high temperature, can it? That and the, uh, and the furniture. Um, and I'm not sure uh, how the houses are built today. They must be better than certainly a, a trailer was back then. But, but you're right, the uh, material inside is what really causes the biggest problem. The smoke and inhalation kills a lot of folks. How many of the fires that you have are, are just sometimes people just being careless? I mean, do people need to be more careful or aware? Absolutely. Uh, I expect uh, 40 or 50 percent of the fires today, or back then even, was due to carelessness. Uh, something left on the stove, or a cigarette in a, in a, in a chair, uh, a candle, or kerosene lighting, those kind of things. And I'm sure there's notes indicating all those possibilities. Let's talk about uh, fundraising. Uh, how is the, how much time, or what, how has the role of fundraising changed since you first joined the company? Is it more time, less time, or uh, different requirements? There's certainly more time back then fundraising because if there wasn't anyone to give us money back then, such as the county commission. I think uh, years and years ago, we got maybe $1,000 a year from the fire department. Then it increased to 1500 and uh, every year probably increased a little bit. But the fundraisers were often pa uh, uh, pancake days, uh, bake sales, uh, uh, a boot uh, on the street, boot, uh, we call it tag day. Uh, anything to make money, uh, and of course, like I say, the, the pancake day was a big thing. All the farmers in the county would donate hogs, uh, eggs, uh, the stores, the grocery stores, the A&P store, the, uh, White's Grocery, uh, uh, which you don't have today, would donate flour and eggs and sugar and butter and syrup, and, and, you, you, and all that was profit different today. 
you got to buy most of these uh, stuff, your hogs and your uh, sugar and eggs and that kind of stuff. Where, how did the women's auxiliary play in all of this? The women were a great part in it. The women uh, patted out the sausage cakes, uh, made the gravy. Uh, they were there real early in the morning when, fire, when pancake day was uh, to uh, peel potatoes or whatever the situation may be. They were right there on the spot. Do you think that some of the uh, people who have moved here in the last few years realize or do they think they know that a lot of our companies are volunteer? Most of their no. No, and that's one of the things I did when I was chief. I made sure that uh, we had strictly volunteer put on all of our vehicles. Uh, because people moving in here from Gaithersburg or D.C. or anywhere out of, the, out of the state of West Virginia had no idea that we were volunteer here. Where they came from generally was the paid. So they had everything already made for them. Yeah. 